it's now been a week from when Moldova's oligarchs party Democratic Party from oligarch Plahotniuk gave up the power and a new government and new parliament started working in normal conditions. So what's now? Where Moldova is heading? Will it clean up from the oligarchs? We will ask Maya Sandu, the new prime minister, about all of that. The first question is that Moldova was like for more than a week in a dual power state. So, but after that, the Plahotniuk parties, they uh, gave up power. So what, what is now? Can we say that crisis in Moldova is over and everything is fine? We can definitely say that the peaceful uh, transition of power has happened. We have a legitimate government in the office. But, of course, the situation is uh, still complicated because even though the uh, head of the regime has left the country, and I mean here Plahotniuk, uh, he still has people in the justice sector that he controls, uh, people in the prosecution, in many other institutions. So we are only starting now the process of cleaning up the uh, state institutions from the control of the former regime. Uh, and trying to uh, ensure uh, real independence of these institutions. And, you know, we also in Ukraine have this process of their oligarchization and you have it in Moldova now, but we all know that it's like very complicated and very long process. Can you tell more what are, you know, the main uh, places, the main uh, powers in government, in the, in the state that should be cleaned and from where to start in Moldova? We understand that building uh, independent and strong institutions is quite a challenging process. Uh, we understand that it takes a long time, but at the same time, uh, now in Moldova and uh, in Ukraine, I believe there is a window of opportunity. We have to start from the key institutions. Uh, in our case, it's the prosecution. It's the justice sector, the courts, and we are considering now in the parliament uh, some amendments to the uh, law and prosecution that would allow us to uh, uh, change the prosecutor general because the current prosecutor general has been involved in um, the regime's abuses and hasn't been doing anything to investigate the big corruption cases that uh, made Moldova infamous. And for instance, we are talking about the banking sector fraud. Uh, which was in the amount of 12% of GDP, and four years later, after the fraud was discovered, uh, we have no one uh, in prison uh, to, uh, you know, to be sanctioned, and we have no one single cent recovered. So it's prosecution, it's um, the courts, uh, the Supreme Council of Magistrature, uh, the Supreme Court of Justice, we have an issue with the Constitutional Court, which issued several days ago uh, illegal decisions. Now we have even the opinion of the uh, Venice Commission, which confirms this. So these are the main institutions where we need to start. Yes, it's not uh, necessarily the direct uh, activity of the government, but we are trying to come up with policy proposals, with draft laws that would allow us to clean up the justice sector. And I also read that you are planning to, uh, to have an anti-corruption bureau as we established in Ukraine a few years ago. So what are the plans? And I also read that you plan to invite some foreign experts to that. Will there be any cooperation uh, with Ukraine, for example? And when this, uh, when this bureau will be established in Moldova, how do you think? I would like to have this bureau, this council of advisors uh, for the prime minister, for the prime minister's office, established in some two weeks, um, and we would like to invite people uh, both from Ukraine, from Romania, uh, and learn from experiences of these countries. Also, we're trying to uh, figure out if there would be. Uh, international experts uh, coming from other countries where the justice sector already works, uh, where it is independent. And uh, that's why we need this uh, advisory board, because we would like to understand where should be our priorities. The agenda is very heavy. The expectations of the people are very high. 
they uh, believe that once you have a change in the government, uh, automatically you would have a change in the justice sector in prosecution, which is not, uh, which is not the case, unfortunately. But we would like to figure out what are the main issues that we need to address at the beginning, what are the uh, mistakes that we need to avoid, and that's why uh, we are forming this advisory board. I would also like to understand, uh, especially from colleagues in uh, Kiev, what has been the experience of establishing a specific anti-corruption court, and an agency uh, establishing from scratch an agency which would deal with the big corruption, knowing that the reform of the prosecution in its totality is going to take some time. Mm -hmm. And you know what happened in Moldova is a very interesting case because two parties with, with totally different ideology, I mean socialists and your bloc, uh, pro-European bloc, you, you, you get united but you have different geopolitical views. How do you think, will this coalition live for a long time and is now the work of the government, the work of the parliament is going is going well. Are there any you know disagreements, or everything is just okay? The partnership that we have signed with the Socialist Party is not a natural one, and uh, of course it's difficult to say how long this partnership is going to last. But uh, this was the only chance for us to get rid of the oligarchic regime and believe me and believe us it was extremely difficult to uh, live under a regime which has cancelled elections which was uh, harassing uh, civil society the independent press uh, which has changed the electoral law so that they could manipulate and rig the elections which has been involved in huge corruption cases and no institution would, uh, would react to that. So that's why we had to use this opportunity. We made this, uh, we signed this partnership. We have a common objective, which is written in our agreement. Uh, the agreement is public. The common objective is the de-oligarchization of the country. At the same time, the government is uh, pro-European uh, and uh, you could check on the CVs of uh, the ministers in my cabinet and the government program is based on the association agreement that the Republic of Moldova has with the EU. So far, things have been working uh, pretty well. We have been uh, adopting new legislations in the parliament in a speedy way, and, and the government uh, so far has full support of the parliament. So we've been to Moldova and we were speaking to people and they all are fed up with corruption, with Plachotniuk. But what Plachotniuk said, that he would be back and he preparing some plan, uh, so-called plan for Moldova. What do you think about it? Are you preparing for his comeback? What would wait, wait for him uh, in Moldova? Maybe some investigation or some that kind of stuff? You know, I'm uh, coming now from a meeting with all the mayors uh, of the country and I have to tell you that I haven't heard the mayor speaking for the last, at least for the last two years, uh, because they have uh, been harassed, they've been uh, uh, blackmailed uh, with criminal files and so on. Uh, I'm trying to say that people are feeling the freedom in this country and it's going to be very difficult for somebody to uh, try to take away this freedom. But we are aware of the risks. As I said at the beginning, we know that in some of the institutions, the old regime still has some influences. And that's why we need to move fast. We need to make the, in the institutions independent. We need to make them uh, strong, uh, which, which means uh, having the good professionals, courageous people would not allow anyone in the future to uh, capture uh, the state, to capture the institutions as Plachot knew did before. And you know, this, uh, this fight against corruption, against oligarchs in Moldova is now, has now begun, but what will be the moment when you can say, you and your government and the parliament would say, okay, we have done our work, the country is now clean from oligarchs? It's going to be a long process, but at least as a threshold, I see uh, when we have a prosecutor general who doesn't listen to any politicians, not to me, not to the socialists, not to Plachotniuk, when we have a, a Supreme Council of Magistrature 
which is uh, formed of independent judges, honest uh, judges, people with integrity. Uh, when we have a Supreme Council of uh, Prosecutors uh, formed of uh, people with integrity, for me, this is going to be the, uh, the first sign that the country is actually uh, uh, going into the right direction. And, you know, you are very respected and good treated in the European Union and Ukraine as Moldova has this course to Europe. Well, how do you think what perspectives now Moldova has with your government, with the new parliament? Will it join the European Union in the nearest years or what plans your government has for it regarding that the, you formed coalition with the Socialist Party who don't want to join the EU? We uh, do have very good relations with the EU institutions and we have received a lot of support in the past when we were facing a very difficult situation when the government was taking anti-democratic measures. We just had the visit of Commissioner Han uh, in Moldova and we are very optimistic about uh, re-establishing the political dialogue, the full political dialogue with the EU, and then uh, unfreezing all the projects and the assistance of the country. At the same time, we are uh, conscious about the impediments, including that the government uh, is supported by, uh, in the parliament, by a pro-European force, but also by a force which wants closer ties with Kremlin, we do hope to get to a point when all the political parties in the country would sign for a commitment uh, to uh, get uh, to make Moldova at some point a member of the EU. For now, we just need that we need to work very hard uh, to prove to our EU uh, partners and not only to, to them, but also to all the development partners of the country that we uh, deserve the support and that we are serious when we talk about building a democratic state, uh, a state which would work for the citizens. And my last question will be about Ukraine. Here we also will have a new government, a new parliament in, in a while. We have a new government, new president. So have you established any new contacts? Any, what, what do you plan for relationships with Ukraine? And also regarding the question of Transnistria, I know that Ukrainian representative have been to Moldova at the time of the crisis and he met you and also the government, uh, the so-called government of pa Pavlo Filip, he, he met uh, that prime minister, so-called prime minister, and you. So what will be the development of uh, relationships between Ukraine and Moldova? We would like to have uh, very good relations with Ukraine. There are uh, challenges, similar challenges that our countries are facing, and uh, I believe that uh, we should look for common uh, solutions. Uh, there are things that we can learn from Kiev, and then there are things that probably Kiev can learn from us. Uh, Transnistria is a big issue on our agenda. We know that the regime in Tiraspol has survived uh, to a big extent uh, thanks to the corruption case, uh, corruption schemes and to smuggling. So we would like to hope that the authorities in Kiev will help us uh, tackling these corruption schemes, especially because in the past there was participation both from uh, Kishinev and probably from Ukraine in some of the uh, this uh, smuggling and corruption happening in Transnistria. And there are many other uh, areas of cooperation we hope to establish quickly, uh, good relations and, and to start tackling uh, all the problems uh, that we might have. Mm -hmm.